Hi, I'm Amy. And I'm Katie, and this is Monumental, a small show about the big things God does in the lives of ordinary people. November is Adoption Awareness Month, so we've decided to do a little something different. (laughs) This month, we will have three episodes, and we also bring a man onto the show for the first (laughs) time. This week, we talked to Pastor Max Carell and his wife Annie, who you may remember from Season 1. Max and Annie adopted a number of years ago, and next week will share with us their story. But this week, they talk about some different aspects of adoption, like why it's important for believers and how should the church think about it. In the third episode, we'll talk to their daughter, Allie, about her story of being adopted and how God used that in her life for good. So what do you think about adoption um, in terms of just a biblical concept? I mean why adopt Mm -hmm. you know why christians adopt well i think people adopt lots of times christians adopt because they have a desire to care well you know the bible talks about caring for the orphan all the time i think christians have a biblical mandate to take care of children And they feel that as a sense of responsibility Mm -hmm. um, and as as a sense of uh, having love for children, for God's, for other people. We should have a sense of, and most people, even most non-Christians, I think still, or a good good, uh, percentage of Mm non-Christians, still believe in fruitfulness. They still desire to have children. Mm -hmm. And so that's in us to see ourselves reproduced but god says not just reproduced mm-hmm. god says see ourselves being fruitful mm-hmm. for his glory to present um covenant children children of promise to him to raise up children and so uh christians should have uh, a more intense sense of mm-hmm. raising up children to god and desiring mm-hmm. to be fruitful mm-hmm. But of course, today, uh, nobody even talks about fruitfulness. I mean, if uh, I mean, can you imagine in an evangelical church a pastor uh, getting up for preaching on Sunday morning and and saying, "Well, our text today is about uh, fill the earth and subdue it," and <laughs> and we're we're going to look to see how God has called all of us here today to be fruitful and to have lots of children. You know, he might say something about adoption, but that's just to you know to take care of those 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 children who were accidentally born of people Mm. who were fruitful. You know, Mm -hmm. and it's it's uh, it's sad because well, it's not just sad; it's sin. It's sin Mm -hmm. that we don't like children. Mm -hmm. It's sin that we're so selfish we don't want to be fruitful. It's sin that we've bought into what the world says about our purpose for existence. Mm -hmm. It's sin that we think that God isn't capable to feed and care for his people. And it really is, I think, um, it's just a lie. It's just just against God. Mm -hmm. You know, we want, uh, the world wants to uh, cast off God and our thoughts of him and our wickedness desires to cast him off and so we we just say well this we got to stop we have to stop being fruitful and you would say this is spread over even into the church it's not just the oh the yeah world the church thing. <laughs> yeah well the church is the the place where the pulpit is the place where we should be changing the world Mm-hmm. Yeah. And obviously we're not. I believe that we could, that it could change the world if mm-hmm. if we would preach what we should preach. I think mm-hmm. the world would change. But So but the way the not. world is in some ways is a reflection of what's going on in yes. the pulpits. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. And how can people know mm-hmm. truth unless somebody declares it to them? Yeah. Right. So, so fruitfulness was, a, I mean, one of the first calls of God on us. The beginning of creation and that i mean naturally most direct application is having children <laughs> yes but then the bearing fruit i mean it it 
reaches further than that um, as Christians, as believers. Yes. And so you think about uh, how can adoption be Christians being fruitful? Mm -hmm. Well, aren't you loving life? I mean, isn't that what isn't that what you're doing when you adopt a child? Is you're just loving life, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you become the you become the uh, the nurturer of this fruit of life. Mm-hmm. And I just look at that and I say, why isn't that fruitfulness? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying we shouldn't be fruitful with our own bodies mm-hmm. and with our own marriages. But I am saying that I believe that adoption actually is being fruitful for Christians. It is a way that we look at life and we say yes, mm-hmm. yes to life. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we uh, even yes to life that uh, is born of difficulty mm-hmm. and difficult circumstances. We say yes, we're mm-hmm. going to see this life mm-hmm. uh, go on and make more life right? Mm -hmm. It's not just that we're fruitful by adopting a child. We have the expectation that that child will be a servant of God, Mm -hmm. and they themselves, according to his will, will present a a holy seed to him, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so it's... uh, And looking at children um, as a blessing, that's Mm -hmm. what God has told us. Children Mm -hmm. are a blessing, and often we don't look at them as a blessing. Um, we look at them as a burden, mm-hmm. and it's obedience. So, in, in preparation for talking about this topic, we had you had mentioned uh, some aspects of raising um, adopted children. I think there were three things that we've been talking about when we were talking earlier, and they have to do with the influences on our children. And I'm there. Somebody else could probably bring up more, but I th- I think of three very significant things. So the the three things that I think of are the uh, the genetics of the child. We're all born with mm-hmm. genetics. Mm-hmm. The second one is the environment, and the environment is significant. And the mm-hmm. third one is the heart of the child, Mm -hmm. all of our hearts, right? We all have genetics, we all have environment, we all Mm -hmm. have our hearts that have to be dealt with. So it is true of all of us. You have the fact that we are, uh, we're born and there are things genetically in us that will predispose us to certain things. Mm -hmm. And that's true of children who are adopted. They They have genetics that will make them be uh, blonde, perhaps, or brunette, blue eyes or green, mm-hmm. uh, a certain height, um, and maybe predisposed to certain kinds of illness. You know, there are mm-hmm. other things, some negative things um, that it's true with anyone. It's true with any mm-hmm. child. Um, but it also will affect their personality. If you see a family and they have seven uh, natural-born children, they don't have any adopted children, but they have seven children Mm -hmm. born to the parents, the children will have different personalities and sometimes very different, and yet Mm -hmm. there still is this strain of connection in personality to the parents usually. You can find something in mom or dad or grandpa Mm -hmm. or grandma that's – Oh, okay. You have that kind of yeah. The way they laugh, yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, and so that's true of uh, of all children, whether they're adopted or they're not adopted, and that's genetics. There's a lot to be said for genetic. Okay. Then you have the the issue of environment, and environment is something, and that's for Christian parents. That's a huge thing because. Mm-hmm. We have a responsibility not to raise our children in an environment that's given over to corruption and sin. We have a responsibility to raise our children and to teach them uh, the fear and admonition of the Lord. We have a responsibility to make the claims that God allows us to make toward them in very specific ways by 
seeing to it that they're in church, by seeing to it that they are in small group, by seeing to it that we pray with them, that we speak about God to them, that we live in front of them in a certain way, that we mm-hmm. give them the discipline that they need in their lives to uh, fight against their own sins and corruptions. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of those things and many more are ways in which we uh, claim for them the promises of God by doing our work as God has commanded us to do toward our children, whether our children are naturally born to us or whether they're adopted. Mm-hmm. Right. Those things are our responsibility to do. We, we are to give them that environment. And that is a significant thing. It doesn't um, guarantee anything Mm -hmm. about how our children, but it has a significant contribution that's undeniable, right? Just the, uh, you can see that through centuries Mm -hmm. of parenting, of the difference between how uh, one child is raised and how another child is raised. So that is environment, and it would be true, as I said, for adopted children or for naturally born children. It would be true. Uh, the third thing is connected to that. The third thing would be the, the fact that um, all of us have corruption in our hearts. We're mm-hmm. born with the sin of Adam, and we are spiritually dead and in need of life given to us by the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So parents give our children, we get, we're supposed to give our children an environment where they understand that and that is most conducive to the Holy Spirit doing his work. And that isn't to say that the Holy Spirit can't work without that environment happening. He does. Mm-hmm. He does mm-hmm. what he wishes, and he does amazing things to people, saving them out of the most corrupt types of circumstances, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. according to his will. And yet it pleases God and has pleased him from his first work with his with his creatures. It has pleased him to work through families and through parents. Mm-hmm. It has pleased him to, to bless families and parents with a succession mm-hmm. of faith, mm-hmm. right? right? So you have a child of promise, in Isaac, mm. and that's the child of promise. And then all of Abraham's descendants are children of promise, right? Really, that's what we Gentiles who've been grafted into mm-hmm. the church, we are children of promise. Mm-hmm. We've, been, we've been adopted into the kingdom of God. We've been adopted into his family. We are now his sons. And so it has always pleased God to work that way. And it's a kindness to his people to think that we have hope for our children to belong to God. Mm -hmm. And we don't just have to live with some kind of a, oh, maybe, maybe this, he'll, one of my kids will be a Christian. Maybe, you know, that's, that's crazy Mm. to think that, that, yeah, it's (laughs) faithless, but it's also out of step with, with what God even tells us Mm. about his, uh, his uh, purposes toward us, which doesn't mean he's, obligated to save all of our children we should still plead with him for their souls as we please plead with him for our own mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. but um but when we have children who come to us through adoption they are our children mm-hmm. and god looks at our adopted children as our children and we claim the promises about mm-hmm. our children for the ones we adopt, just mm-hmm. like we claim the promises about our children. We instruct them, we pray for them, we pray with them, we take them to church, we discipline them, we, we do all the very practical claims mm-hmm. for their souls before God because his, in, in some ways because of the analogy of adoption as, as Christians into, into God's family. Mm-hmm. In some ways, they are a better representation of that reality Mm -hmm. than the ones who are born right from our loins, right? They're even more of a representation of it. And so they certainly are subjects of all of those things. They have rights to all those things from us, Mm -hmm. and we should absolutely be giving them 
So don't have any expectations that they wouldn't become believers. No, absolutely don't raise them not. Away, and even more, almost yeah. more so for well, well, because they don't have my DNA, then that means yeah. maybe God won't. No, because that's not. Yeah, no, <laughs> not at all. And if you, if, the temptation yeah. can be to put too much stock in the DNA mm. part, where we should actually be putting more stock in the heart. And, <laughs> The heart and the power of God. And that's true of all of our children. Again, adopted or not, we... Mm Uh, what we have to have is a dependence on God and his ability to make alive that which is not alive. Mm. And none of us are born uh, without the sin of Adam. And none of us are born with this, you know, well, some people may say that some people are spiritually regenerate before they're born. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to push into that in this discussion. I Mm. just, I just, I just say that the truth is no person born yeah. of man ever without sin. Yeah. is without the sin of Adam, right. right? And must have the Holy Spirit of God to make them alive, to regenerate them, to, to quicken them to life, mm-hmm. that they were once dead, now they're alive. And then that's all of us. Mm-hmm. If we're in Christ, that's all of us. Right. Mm-hmm. Every one of us had to, somebody, my mother, your mother, your mothers were praying, your mm-hmm. fathers praying that you would mm-hmm. become alive by the power of the Holy Spirit so that you would be in Christ. Mm-hmm. And that's all of our children. Mm-hmm. That's what we pray for them. It's a, of necessity mm-hmm. that they're made alive. Well, it almost seems like instead of treating adoptions in this kind of, I mean, there are special circumstances, but as something totally other and different, maybe what we need to actually change is our perspective of just parenting. Yes. (laughs) It's having children, period. That's true. Not adoption, but rather... I'd say that that's true. That's a good observation to put into words what you just said. I think people who have... A, a commitment to good mm-hmm. parenting have much less difficult a time mm. with children, whether they're adopted or not, mm-hmm. because they just have a commitment to right. do what parents are supposed to do. Parenting is work. Yeah. I mean, it, it requires work. Mm-hmm. And so if that's your commitment already, mm-hmm. yeah. but yeah. if you're lazy, it doesn't matter if you adopt or they're biological, mm-hmm. You know, if you're lazy or self-seeking, mm-hmm. guess what? It's going to be a mess, and yeah. it's going to be difficult. Well, so what happens when, what would you say to someone that has prayed this way and um, has done that, but things aren't going well in the sense of the child's not become a Christian or they've rejected the faith completely? Um or even the family, does that mean, you know, what was the point? Well, absolutely, uh, what was the point is the wrong thing to say. First of all, we don't know the end, ever. And what do you say about those children? Well, you just keep on praying. I mean, we all know families who have a child or some children who are adults who are out in a place. Mm -hmm. And what do they do by faith? But sometimes in our church, we have families that occasionally will meet together with other families with children who are in that state of rebellion, and they will just pray for them. Mm -hmm. And they're not giving up. Mm-hmm. They're not saying what was the purpose of it. Mm-hmm. And these aren't adopted kids. I think there can be fear about adoption because people think, well, they're going to struggle because they were adopted mm-hmm. or they might rebel because of that mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever the fears are. And but what I'm hearing you say is that you do it the same way, either mm-hmm. <laughs> way. Yeah. And the thought I've had is, well, I've seen stories both directions, you know, where it's, yeah. it's uh, sure, there's some stories about adopted kids who have rebelled, but there's plenty of stories of biological children who have rebelled, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, who's to mm-hmm. say it's because of their adoption, you know, mm-hmm. maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, Yeah. but mm-hmm. what I'm hearing you say is it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You well, raise I raise your children. I would go further and to say it wasn't because of their adoption they rebelled. Mm-hmm. 
It was because of their hearts. Yeah. And that their hearts, now that isn't to say that they don't have real ought mm-hmm. against their adoptive parents. Maybe their right. adoptive parents sinned against them, but then you can have that in naturally born mm-hmm. children. You right. can have parents that molest their own children. Mm-hmm. And still, that person has before God no excuse for their sin. Mm-hmm. Right. They they stand before God responsible for their lives to give an account. Mm-hmm. Okay? And so um, you you look at you think about it uh, and I don't mean I'm not really contradicting you Katie I don't I don't think this is what you're really saying you weren't saying that they have an excuse right. but I wanted no. to put the point out mm-hmm. or make it the point that the that the children who are adopted they can't stand before God and say but I was adopted mm-hmm. right 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 mm-hmm. they have the same problem as everybody else yep <laughs> everybody else has another thing that they might want to trot out as their reason for mm-hmm. why it's okay for them to have mm-hmm. been rebellious but in the end it's all of us just trying to put off responsibility on somebody else mm-hmm. or some other thing in our lives mm-hmm. some other circumstance and rather than mm-hmm. rather than claiming the responsibility for mm-hmm. ourselves it's mm-hmm. it's our hearts that are wicked Right, and that isn't to say people don't sin against us; they do. Right, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. But our hearts are wicked. In the end, we're responsible mm-hmm. before God. Yeah, yeah. I remember before we had Kimmy, we found out we could get pregnant. After we got Allie, we found out there was a good chance that I could get pregnant. Mm-hmm. So we were debating on whether to even do that to get pregnant again because mm-hmm. Allie would be the middle child; she would be the adopted child and the middle child (laughs) middle side child syndrome yeah the whole middle child struggles that Mm -hmm. they have and i remember we even talked to a friend of ours who's a psychologist and he said well yes you should have another child if you can have another child go Mm -hmm. for it um so i i just thought well yeah he's right but it was just kind of funny how we looked at it Mm -hmm. like this adopted child can they handle this you Mm, know and that was the wrong way to look at it Mm -hmm. this adopted child is going to go through struggles and you know go through difficulties just like any child Mm -hmm. and yes go have another baby (laughs) you have another baby um i've been thinking about that Mm -hmm. like these two big pictures that the bible gives us about god is our father and adopting us as his sons. And then you have this picture of Christ loving the church and laying himself down for her and how marriage is the example of that. And marriage is not bad, although people blame marriage itself being bad, and so that's why I didn't get married or my parents were divorced, and so that it's just marriage. It's marriage's fault. Well, adoption can go bad, (laughs) quotations bad, right? But the picture of actually adoption is beautiful and and what God does by making us his sons and then the same with marriage. Marriage is beautiful. It can go wrong. (laughs) Sin will ruin it. But adoption is not bad. Marriage is not bad. It's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah, (laughs) true. Yes. With both of those things, it's interesting. You can hear people's focus be the, well, the fears, mm-hmm. you know, the negative things they've heard about it. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and that can often be the cautions, mm-hmm. you know, when you say, I'm getting married or I'm going to adopt, mm-hmm. you know, you're met with caution. Mm-hmm. Um, can, there's so easily fear of suffering that even Christians mm-hmm. so easily get caught up in. I mean... Mm-hmm. You know, or fear of sanctification, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Even. Well, and mm-hmm. comfort is something we we make an idol. Mm. You know, and so as soon as our comfort is threatened, then the first question is, "Are you sure you really want to do that?" Because mm-hmm. this might happen, or this might happen. And so, how do we, you know, what should the the church's response, what should believers' response be to? Mm-hmm these good things that our tendency can be to fall to fear or to call bad 
to call bad, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it, the talking about comfort. And, well, there are a lot of ways in which you could look at today's, uh, at our society, and you could see their hatred of marriage and the commitments are, that are involved in it mm -hmm. and their willingness to participate. So the age of people getting married is older and older, and the number mm -hmm. of people getting married are fewer and fewer. Mm -hmm. Right. And so our commitment is then to no commitment. Mm -hmm. Our commitment then is to making sure that we can get all we can with the least mm -hmm. possible amount of discomfort mm -hmm. right. or, or a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And the same is true of children. Mm -hmm. Just generally in our culture, children are more and more cho – having children is seen to be a liability. Mm -hmm. It's not an asset. It's a liability. Mm -hmm. So it's not happy as a man whose quiver is full. It's, you know, happy as a man who doesn't have any because then he can have a boat, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And happy as a woman who doesn't have any because she can have a career. Yeah. She doesn't have to make these hard choices, mm -hmm. right? And so before you even get to the question of adoption and the difficulty of whatever the extra mm -hmm. um, difficulties that might attend an adoption would be, mm -hmm. the extra cost, I can't remember, we talked about it before, but... Um, yeah things that have to do with with uh, um, dealing with a person who has a different, mm -hmm. possibly a very different personality than you, yeah. and then the cost of adoption itself, itself yeah. right? Well, uh, aside from that, you have the regular type of discomfort that it attends having children, mm -hmm. which we already as a so society are unwilling to do. Right. Yeah. Right. We don't want them. Mm -hmm. And so... If you you think about what Annie just said about uh, wanting more children, and our friend Bob who said, "Yeah, yeah. have more children." Yeah. Well, of course, have yeah. more children, right? Yeah. And Bob was just uh, beautifully knee jerk reacting to the fact that we don't want to be stupid, you know, think overthinking something just mm -hmm. so stupidly. Um, but in our culture, no, that that's not how most people mm -hmm. would respond. What do you mean? Have do you, should you have another one? You already have two. Why do you even have those two? Yeah, mm -hmm. right. What was yeah. wrong with you? <laughs> Don't you realize how this is tying you down? Would you realize how this is ruining your career and how this? Yeah. You know, it's it's that's our culture. Yeah. And so again, adoption. What is that? You, you know, you want to just kind of smooth adoption out into the big picture, and what mm -hmm. you end up seeing is, oh, okay, in the big in the big picture of things, someone who's already overcome the selfishness of mm -hmm. wanting to be comfortable to the point that they're willing to give themselves to having children, they're already most of the way there. <laughs> yeah. Then the process of what that will mean in their lives, they've already understood that they're willing to undergo the discomfort of it mm -hmm. in order to have the blessings of it yeah. and the joys of it. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, I guess I'm kind of, I just keep kind of thinking about this as always wanting to smooth things out, you know, trying to, meld the adoption thing right into yeah. yeah. childbearing yeah. Yeah. and children generally. Yeah. And you realize that when you think about it that way, yeah. you get wrapped around the axle. That's yeah. what Annie yeah. and I were doing when we're thinking about, okay, middle child, okay, adopted middle yeah. child. You know? <laughs> You're wrapped around the axle and it really isn't a significant thing. It only The only way it becomes significant is that you kind of make it that way right. uh -huh. rather yeah. than facing it like uh -huh. you ought to face it and just going for it. Yeah. So when we found out um, that we were getting a baby, the only thing we knew was that it was African American. We didn't know if it was a boy or girl, any, anything about anything. <laughs> and um, we had been open to, you know, child different race. But when we found out, we were a little bit like, is this, you know, like, is this a good idea for us? Mm -hmm. You know, like what kind of different cultural type stuff mm -hmm. are we going to deal with and are we going to make we're pretty white you know <laughs> like are we going to make good parents very, very white, white. <laughs> we're very white <laughs> and um not just white or german <laughs> yeah, white german <laughs> quiet i don't know you name it like. <laughs> anyway um but i talked to beth and 
she was like, there's a thousand things you don't know that you're going to have to have faith for. Mm -hmm. Here's the one thing you do know. (laughs) Why not have faith for that too? Mm -hmm. And I just thought that's, yeah, you know, like, why take the one thing we could be afraid of and, Mm -hmm. and allow that to stop us from receiving like Mm -hmm. the most incredible blessing, you know? Mm -hmm. That's very helpful. Yeah. And when it comes to adoption, I just wanted to yeah. add that um, I think it's important that both the husband and wife are in on this. Mm. They're they're all for it. They're uh, they have faith for this uh, to adopt, um, yeah. to raise a baby, to raise a child, and adopt um, without one of you, you know, holding back or. It's a good way to start resenting your spouse mm-hmm. if you're not starting out on the yes. <laughs> same page. Yes. So it, even if with these questions at the end, talking about what's the church's role in supporting or helping families who adopt, it, it almost seems like the answer then is also, well, just support them like you'd support any other parent. Yeah, I think so. I think you support them spiritually. You support them. The church is... Uh, the, the analogy of the body, mm-hmm. we take care of one another. Right. We, we, we invest ourselves in one another. We love one another. I think if there's a way that's different, well, if you've adopted a child lately, you realize you're going to put out some real good cash. <laughs> and I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. so what's the average now? 30000 35000 30 to $40,000 wow, yeah. to, to adopt a child. And you have to realize that a young couple who can't have a child and want to have children uh, and want to adopt, they're going to have to come up with some serious green, right, <laughs> to get this child. The same is true with, with uh, supporting them uh, in difficulty. So um, like I said, uh, if you adopt a child, there's a time – at the beginning of the adoption when things aren't final. You don't have that with Mm -hmm. a a biological child. You have parents who are holding a child, and in the back of their mind, they're thinking, well, this isn't final yet. Right. Well, then you think about people who are wanting to adopt through the foster care system. Right. And they're fostering these children and loving them for one year and two years and Mm -hmm. three years. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And maybe longer. Yeah. And then after one year and two years, then the system decides they're going to go back to the biological parents right. and we're going to give them one other try. Yeah. And maybe that's the right thing. You have to trust yeah. the system, trust the government somewhat, right? Mm-hmm. The government is there for a purpose. God mm-hmm. is the one who sets authorities. Yes. Mm-hmm. And in places like this, you're hoping that, they're, that they are faithful, mm-hmm. right? But they go back to the parents, the biological parents, and then you've loved those kids for two years and yeah. you're just, you've invested in them, you've taken them to church, you've tried to catechize them, you've prayed for their souls, and there they went. Mm-hmm. And I think that's another place. The church, the body of Christ can say, we're with you, we're praying with you. Mm-hmm. You know, we know that there could be a, a serious upheaval. Mm-hmm in this whole process and you know just helping them and supporting them mm-hmm. those are two things that are very different mm-hmm. the cost of it yeah and the in the emotional stress of the process until it's final right are things that are very very different but other than that these are children mm-hmm. and you, these are parents and parents are supposed to parent children (laughs) and the church is there to help parents do the work of parenting Mm -hmm. children and that's how the church supports them Mm -hmm. and loves them in it just like we would any other biological child Monumental is hosted by Katie Walker and Amy Molina. It is produced and edited by Katie Walker, and it is executive produced by Nathan Alberson and Jake Menzel. If you like the show, please don't forget to rate and review in the app of your choice. And if you're interested in more great content, including articles and other podcasts, please visit warhornmedia.com. Thank you.